In the early hours of Wednesday, 30 August 2023, military officers in Gabon announced they were seizing power from President Ali Bongo Ondimba in a stunning coup d'etat threatening the Bongo family's half-century rule over the Central African nation. The soldiers said they were annulling the results of recent polls in which Ali Bongo had been declared the winner with the opposition claiming the election to be rigged. But who is Ali Bongo and how did Gabon get to this point? To some, he's a spoiled playboy prince who saw ruling the oil-rich Gabon as his birthright. This one-time aspiring musician stepped into his father's shoes to continue his family's rule over Gabon. In this episode of African Biographics, we cover the rise of Ali Bongo as well as the most recent events in Gabon leading to his downfall. Alain Bernard Bongo was born in 1959 in Brazzaville in the neighboring Republic of Congo. His father's name was Albert Bernard Bongo, later Omar Bongo Ondimba, the second president of Gabon who ruled for 42 years from 1967 until his death in 2009. His mother, Josephine Kama, later known as Patience Dabani, was a famous Gabonese singer. Alain Bernard's birth story and origins are shrouded in controversy among the Gabonese. Rumors, which he has always denied, have persisted for years that he was adopted from the Nigerian Southeast at the time of the Nigerian Civil War. The young Alain Bernard was still in primary school when his father, Omar Bongo, took control of this tiny Central African nation in 1967. This former French colony gained independence in 1960 and is currently a member of OPEC, the oil cartel, with a production of about 180,000 barrels of crude oil per day, making it the eighth largest producer of oil in sub-Saharan Africa. The nation of Gabon is home to more than 2.5 million people. Bongo Senior had the reputation of being a kleptocrat, one of the wealthiest men in the world with a fortune derived from Gabon's oil. He was also a pillar of Franc Afrique, a strategy by which the nation of France bound itself to its former African colonies through cronyism, often tainted with corruption and human rights abuses. In 1973, the Bongo family converted to Islam, after which Alan's name was changed to Ali. This decision was widely seen by critics as a way to attract investment from Muslim countries. But the elder Bongo, who was previously an animist and not baptized in the Christian faith, also evoked spiritual reasons for his conversion to Islam. The fact that Ali Bongo went to the best schools in Libreville, Gabon's capital, and didn't learn local languages was something he would get criticized for later on. When Ali was nine years old, he was sent to a private school in France where he completed his primary education. His international upbringing led many in Gabon to view him as an outsider. The young Ali Bongo had a passion for the arts and in 1977, he recorded a funk album titled A Brand New Man, produced by Charles Bobbitt, manager for the legendary James Brown, and with background vocals and music by James Brown's band. Around the same time, Ali Bongo was studying law and graduated from the Pantheon Sorbonne in Paris in 1978, where he frequented the clubbing scene. He would go on to receive his doctorate from Wuhan University in China in 1980. Encouraged by his father, Ali Bongo quickly abandoned his music career in order to pursue his political ambitions. In this regard, he became involved in politics in 1981 when he joined his father's Gabonese Democratic Party, the PDG. His father appointed him foreign minister in 1989, but this appointment ended after three years because of a constitutional change requiring ministers to be over the age of 35. Ali Bongo was 32 at the time. Ali Bongo eventually went on to lead the defense ministry, a position he held until the death of his father in 2009. But throughout this entire period, it seems he wasn't immediately seen as a natural successor to his father. The Gabonese people didn't see him as a serious candidate. In 2009, rumors emerged that President Omar Bongo was not in good health, particularly in the month of May when he suspended his presidential duties and checked into a clinic in Spain, ostensibly to rest and mourn the death of his wife who had passed away earlier in March. Initial reports of Omar Bongo's death on June 7, 2009 were denied by the Gabon government but an official announcement the next day indicated that Omar Bongo died on June 8, 2009. Afterwards, Senate President Rose Francine Rogombe was sworn in as the interim president two days later and an election was scheduled for August 30 of the same year. 
More than 20 candidates initially announced their intent to stand in the election, including Ali Bongo, who was selected to be the PDG's candidate. After a slight delay in the release of the election results and amid allegations of fraud and voting irregularities, Ali Bongo was declared the winner with slightly more than 40% of the vote. However, the announcement of his victory was soon followed by mass protests and violence, leaving several people dead. An attempt by the opposition to challenge the election results ultimately failed, paving the way for Bongo to be inaugurated as the president of Gabon on 16 October 2009. Gabon's next presidential election was held in August of 2016. Of all the candidates Ali Bongo faced in this context, his strongest challenger was Jean Ping, a former diplomat who had served as president of the United Nations General Assembly and as the chair of the African Union Commission. This particular election was criticized by international observers as lacking transparency and a delay in the release of the results at Gabon on edge. Ali Bongo was declared the winner with 49.8% of the vote, just narrowly beating Ping, who reportedly received 48.2%. As you can probably imagine, this result raised eyebrows. Many people questioned the reported voter turnout in Bongo's home province, which was allegedly more than 99%, compared with a nationwide turnout of less than 60%. Following the announcement of Bongo's victory, protesters started demonstrations, even setting fire to the country's parliament building in Libreville, and there were calls from within the country as well as from the international community for the Electoral Commission to release the results of all the polling stations. In September of the same year, Jean Ping filed a case with the Constitutional Court challenging the results of the election. Two weeks later, the court ruled to uphold Bongo's victory. As part of the ruling, the court cancelled the results from 21 polling stations, which served to increase the president's lead over Ping. The final result was 50.6% for Ali Bongo and 47.2% for Jean Ping. Against the backdrop of Jean Ping rejecting the court's ruling and the international community expressing concern over the proceedings, Ali Bongo was hastily sworn in for his second term on 27 September 2016. As the dust settled on the 2016 election controversy, President Ali Bongo attempted to paint himself as an agent of change. Renewal and innovation became his buzzwords and he replaced government officials from his father's era with a younger generation. While in office, he made efforts to diversify Gabon's economy and build much-needed social and economic infrastructure. Despite this strategy, however, according to the World Bank, the oil sector accounted for about 39% of GDP and 71% of exports in the year 2020. This is why critics also said that President Ali Bongo did little to funnel the oil wealth to the multitudes that lived in poverty. Bongo's detractors still considered him less adept than his father and out of touch with the people due to his privileged upbringing. Economic inequality in Gabon persisted, with some one-third of the population living below the poverty line, leading to general discontent in the country. In particular, Ali Bongo's extravagant spending alienated many in a country where many people wallow in poverty. Human rights groups also alleged the Bongo family turned Gabon into a kleptocratic regime, looting its natural resources, oil wealth and rainforests. In October 2018, Ali Bongo traveled to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia for medical treatment after suffering a stroke. However, the president's advisors refused to reveal any more detail about his state of health. At one point, the government cited fatigue as the reason Bongo was receiving medical treatment abroad, but rumors that he had suffered a stroke persisted and were later confirmed. Ali Bongo's long absence led to a power vacuum, and yet it was several weeks before the government installed the vice president as interim president to ensure continuity. Bongo attempted to quell the rumors about his failing health by appearing in a televised New Year message in which he insisted he was feeling fine and recovering in Morocco. Following his health setback, Bongo was sidelined for almost a year and in early 2019, a coup attempt came in when a group of soldiers and military officers stormed the state radio and television headquarters, took staff hostage and declared they had taken control of Gabon. These soldiers cited their dissatisfaction with Bongo as president, vowing to restore democracy in the country. Luckily for Bongo, Gabon defense and security forces still loyal to him moved in to foil the takeover and rescue the hostages. In the ensuing violence, two soldiers were killed and eight military officers were arrested. 
After eventually returning to his post, Ali Bongo embarked on an image revamp, putting himself forward as a man of rigor bent on rooting out traitors and profiteers from his inner circle. Ali Bongo contested the elections slated for August 26, 2023. In this case, he was seeking a third term in office. Just so you know, there are no term limits in Gabon, so if Ali Bongo was to keep winning elections, he had the chance to become president for life, thus following in his father's footsteps. In these elections, Ali Bongo faced an opposition coalition led by Albert Ondo Osa, an economics professor and former education minister, whose surprise nomination came a week before the elections. On the day of the election, Ali Bongo's government announced a nationwide curfew and cut off internet access. Their justification was that internet access was being restricted because there had been calls for violence and the spreading of misinformation. These elections were criticized by international observers, but a relative calm prevailed until the early hours of Wednesday 30 August 2023 when Ali Bongo was declared the winner. Minutes later, gunfire was heard in the center of the capital, Libreville. A few moments later, a dozen uniformed officers appeared on state television and announced that they had seized power. These school leaders said that they disagreed with the official results of the election, which said that Ali Bongo had won with about two-thirds of the vote. The officers said they had decided to defend peace by putting an end to the current regime, adding that the elections did not meet the conditions for a transparent, credible and inclusive ballot so much hoped for by the Gabonese. Au nom du peuple gabonais. On behalf of the people of Gabon and as guarantor of the protection of our institutions, we have decided to defend peace by putting an end to the current regime. In a later statement, the coup leader said people around the president had been arrested for high betrayal of state institutions, massive embezzlement of public funds and international financial embezzlement. All borders were closed until further notice and state institutions were dissolved. As for President Ali Bongo, in a video apparently from detention in his residence, he called on people to make noise to support him. Send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise. For the people here have arrested me and my family. My son is somewhere, my wife is in, is in another place and I'm at the residence right now. However, crowds took to the streets of Libreville and sang the national anthem to celebrate this coup d'etat. Later on, on Wednesday, 30 August 2023, the coup leaders said in an announcement on Gabon State TV that the head of the country's elite Republican Guard, General Bryce Ngoema, had been unanimously designated president of a transitional committee to lead the country. Apparently, General Ngoema is the cousin of the ousted president. This story in Gabon is still unfolding and it will be interesting to see how all of this will be resolved. Don't be shy to subscribe if you haven't done so already and don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.